Bon Jovi are in the middle of their world tour, which is set to rock fans all over the globe. Last year we went to 30 some odd countries, this year it'll be 40 some odd countries. It just keeps going. The driving force which keeps them going is their sense of adventure. So they chose a place where they haven't been to before to kick off their tour. Bombay in India. It's, it's never the same twice. So it's always a, a challenge and a, and a thrill. Fasten your seatbelts because for the next couple hours, I'm going to take you on a ride like you ain't never seen before in your whole life. <laughs> It's just pretty amazing that people in so many different countries that really don't, that don't understand English, you know, really, really, you know, like our music and respond to it. The world tour takes them to the most exotic and exciting places, but the daily touring routine doesn't allow the time to check things out. We were just in Japan last week, and uh, I think it was our 12th or 13th time. We've never gone out to Mount Fuji or anything like that. You know, like the Tokyo Dome and hotel and the airport you know you try to grab what you see on the way to the gig from the hotel you know what i mean in the car you know you say oh there check that out yeah. now at a place we're a little bit older and a little bit more able to see everything clear and we're not so blinded by it all it's it, it's it's really a nice ride it's a really enjoyable thing oh the romance of paris the italian cooking Scandinavian fjords, every nightclub in Berlin, music of Vienna, and the beer, oh, the beer of Prague. See, those are the kind of things you look forward to. On this tour, Bon Jovi are aiming to incorporate the diverse cultural features of Europe in all their shows. Oh, that's exactly what makes it interesting, the cultural diversity. You know, the languages, the, the, the way that the cultures are geared, they change what songs people like and what songs you play in the set and how you react to the audience and how much English is spoken and, you know, it, all those things are factors. Another factor which needs to be considered is the weather. All the things that rain uh, complicates. Slipping, moisture, electronics don't work very well. It's raining, but it's a great atmosphere. I like singing in the rain because it's um, it's like singing in the shower. You know, it's the best. It's the best for your vocal cords. But there seems to be a festival god who brought out the sunshine when Bon Jovi took to the stage. This is the best tour of our lives. You know, just the idea that we're playing these huge venues with the bill that we're playing with. That our reputation was built on being a live band, and and we don't want to lose that even in stadiums. So we try to make sure that you have contact with your audience. When you get out there, no matter how tired you are, when you get out on that stage, and I think that's where the energy's at. So what? That's really you know, the best feeling in the world. The European fans are very intense. You know, I mean, I, I best um, describe them as saying that they know the verses and the Americans know the chorus. <laughs> And it's it's true. They're they're a wonderful audience. It's a small world these days. You know, what I mean, we uh, we go everywhere, and uh, if we haven't been there yet, we're on the way. And uh, it's nice that you know the the power of music can cross language barriers and boundaries and borders. 
performing their songs in front of an ever-growing fan base in sold-out stadiums all over the world accounts for the massive popularity of the band. They make very good songs and they just last because their music is not something, it's not a hype, it's not, um, it's something that you can always hear and that it's always going to be around, I guess.